to a brand new series of Would I Lie to You, the show where economising with the truth pays dividends. On David Mitchell's team tonight, he's as funny as he's tall, and tall as he's bald, and as bald as he's funny. It's the funny bald tall Dar O'Brien! <laughs> And uh, the only man lucky enough to see Tess daily from <laughs> Splash and Family Fortunes, TV presenter Vernon Kay. <laughs> and uh, on Lee Mack's team tonight, an actress who starred in both A Midsummer Night's Dream and Strictly Come Dancing. So we've seen her bottom and her cha-cha. It's Denise Van Outen. <laughs> borderline, 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 borderline. Yeah. And a comedian who, on his show about work experience, did a stint as a dustman. Although you don't really need training for that, you just pick it up as you go along. It's Rod Gilbert! <laughs> and so the round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. And then it's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Uh, Dara is first up. Dara, please reveal all. Oh, okay. <laughs> in nightclubs, in order to impress the ladies, I used to break into my special catwalk move. <laughs> 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 I, I hope this is uh, true. Um, <laughs> Lee's be team. Before we, you know we're going to ask you to demonstrate it. Before you do, can we just clarify? You mean like a model, or were you on all fours and we in? <laughs> And walking at the same time. No, like a model, like a model. OK, well, could you demonstrate for us now? Well, no, that'd be, that'd be ridiculous. Uh, no, no, that's because, why I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> no, because if I, if I showed you yeah. I, that I did a very good catwalk move, yeah. then obviously I'm telling the truth. Not necessarily. You could do... be lying, but you are able to do it. You could say, when I used to go to nightclubs, I would occasionally stand on one leg. And if I said demonstrate, you'd go, no, because if, if I stand on one leg, it'll prove I can do it. And I'd go, no, <laughs> proves you can stand on one leg. It didn't prove that you used to do it in nightclubs. So <laughs> I, I ask you again, get yourself on the floor. Start walking. This move, this move is so good that <laughs> if I were to show I could do it, you'd yeah. be going, well, obviously, you'd, you'd play that card in a nightclub. Uh, Just imagine we're in a nightclub now, nightclub setting. Yeah. I'm single, I'm well up for it, I'm from Essex. I'll take this. <laughs> <laughs> Will you compromise? Will you do the face? Yeah, do you do a model it's face? Like, do you pout? It's more about the swivel of the face than the face itself. Right. The, uh, the swivel, swivel of, of the face? face. Wow. Of How the do you face. swivel your oh, face? It's very difficult. I can swivel it's... my face. Really? So, I mean, that's swivelling it, isn't it? No. <laughs> that's surely it's swivelling your head. That's bad. Swivelling, that's bad. So, so your face your... swivels when you swivel your no, head. No, no, no. The no, head's no, the no, thing no, your no, face is on. Your head does need to stay still while the face moves if you're going to do it. No, I don't, I don't. I think you can swivel things with the use oh. of things that the things are attached to. <laughs> I can move my eyes, seriously, right to the back of my head. Watch. <laughs> no! There you go. No, 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 yes, yes, anyway, no, yes, yes, oh, wait, 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 yes, yes, swivel your face in relation to other bits of your head. <laughs> I'm swiveling it in relation to the rest of the universe. <laughs> Dara, really, within the rules of the game, I think it would be right for you mm. to show us this move. Dara, I'm going to help you here, oh, no, OK? No, no, no. Here, yes, no. I am. I'm going to help you. I'm oh. going to give you a little bit of music so you've got something to work with. Oh, inspiration. Now, I don't know if we've got anything ready, but hit it. <laughs> wait, wait, stop. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. Wait, 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 This is the catwalk area here, right? Right? Okay. However, first the model walks out to the start of the walk, right? So I'm slightly backstage here. I'm nervous, I'm ready to go, right? This will be the catwalk area here. When I hit the bend, watch for the swivel, right? Dara? <laughs> Dara, was this boring bit part of the chatter? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to explain it all before you did it, but what you, what you were about, what she was about the to see. Ladies. Did you have the confidence in the nightclub to go? <laughs> Cut the music! I'm not ready! Cut the music! <laughs> Everyone, stop having fun! I'm not ready! <laughs> OK, music. Yeah. No clapping, no clapping.
but I find that very attractive. <laughs> The swivel? Did you see the swivel? Oh, yeah. Oh, that was nice. The swivel, the swivel of your head rather yeah. than your face. <laughs> what, you, what you're asking for <laughs> would require surgery. <laughs> That's what the women used to say when he used to chat. <laughs> right. Lee, what's it going to be? Truth or lie? What do we think? Do well, you... I think. Would that I have think... done anything for you in a nightclub? Mm, no, not really. <laughs> Ten years ago, It'd more hair, laugh. thinner, you know. I'd I'm have not, laughed. I'm not letting me fight and wait here, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> definitely wasn't the first time he's done that move. He's, he's definitely he's de pulled that move off before. He's, he's definitely yeah. done that move before. Too much confidence. Do you think so? Mm, too okay. much confidence. Do we think it's the truth, then? But he hasn't necessarily done it for the reasons he's saying he's done it. Men are so indecisive. Let's just go with the truth. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Let's go with the truth. <laughs> <laughs> So, Lee, what's it going to be? Come on. Um, um, <laughs> should we go for the, we go for we'll a... go for the truth. Oh, Let's go on. for a truth. <laughs> right. They're saying it's the truth. Dara O'Brien, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? It is true. Yeah! Wow. Yeah. 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 Come on. Yes, it's true. Uh, Dara used to break into a special catwalk move to impress the ladies in nightclubs. Right, uh, Denise, you're next. I once got a tattoo because I was told that it would disappear after three years. Really? <laughs> when? Um, I... It was on a job that I was doing. It was actually live on TV I was tattooed, and it was on the Big Breakfast. And who had told you that they'd disappear after three years? Johnny Vaughan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, had you not previously heard of tattoos? No, it was a new... They, they were a German company and they came on the show and they claimed that they had this, this new ink that would fade after three years. And they did it live on the Big Breakfast? Yeah. So, can we see it? No, because it's in a place where I don't really want to get it out. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what part of the where, where is it, then? It's just um, at the top of my bottom. What, what is it, Denise? What I had was Barbara Windsor was on the show and, you know, she used to say, oh, cos I love carry-on camping, and, you know, she used to say, well, you are saucy, so I'd, I wanted to have saucy tattooed across there. <laughs> I've got a potato tattoo on my back. Potato? Denise <laughs> 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 yeah. won't show you. I don't mind if I sh get mine out. I might have to undo yeah. a button first. Yeah, undo a button. I'll sort it out, don't worry. All right. <laughs> <laughs> What I'm doing is, what I'm doing is, I'm doing this, but I'm imagining my face has swivelled that way. <laughs> and, uh, right. Uh, that I can confirm that is a potato. Yeah. Are you Rod sure that's got... a potato? Are you yeah. Here? What? Why have you got that? Rod, if I were you, <laughs> Rod, if I were you, I'd have that checked out. <laughs> has it changed shape in the last few years? <laughs> it used to be a chip on his shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Do you know what? It was worth it just for that. <laughs> so, um, Denise, you've already said, if this is true, that we, we can't see it. Um, well, I, I don't mind showing you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe later. Um, <laughs> have you taken legal action against the people who promised you that it would be there for just No, because I don't know who they are. They yeah. didn't leave any forwarding details for a me. Group to of anonymous German men turned up <laughs> on the big breakfast. But it was a big said, breakfast. Yeah, we, we would like to maybe tattoo you in a secret place uh, and <laughs> do not ask any questions. Uh. <laughs> so, David, what are you going to say? Is this the truth or has she made this all up? I believe that you might have had a tattoo on television. What I can't believe is that you'd think that a tattoo wouldn't last forever. That I think you'd be doing well. But fine, she'd I'll, been I'll have told a by Germans that it by, would go. Yeah, the two, the two <laughs> greatest authorities, Germans and Johnny Vaughan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what do you think, Darren? Um, no, the, well, there's, a, it, there's certainly an emotional context in which uh, this could have happened. I don't think anyone's mad enough to have fallen for that. And it's, a, it's a big risk on live television to tattoo someone and then say, oh, don't worry, it'll. It'll, It'll fade, it'll be all gone. We take, think, take we a think, decision. We think What's it's a mean? lie, then. Mm. We think it's a lie. Think we it's think a it's a lie. lie. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Denise Van Outen, were you telling the truth, then, or were you telling a lie? True. Oh! <laughs> wow! That's great. I didn't think you were going to get away with that. Wow! That's really good. 
Yeah, it's true. Uh, Denise did get a tattoo because she was told it would disappear after three years. Now, now you did say that I was the only one. Only you. Only me. Where, Look where away. will I see it? Where, where will we Look How old away. Is? <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. I need counselling. <laughs> right. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to sort out who is telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Mel. <laughs> so, Vernon, what is Mel to you? This is Mel, and he came to the rescue when I almost blew up a banana factory. <laughs> uh, David, perhaps you'd like to explain how you know Mel? Uh, this is Mel. He's the postman who had to retrieve my phone from a post box when I accidentally posted it instead of a letter I was carrying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, finally, Dara, how do you know Mel? This is Mel. Uh, one night we were out stargazing and we were quizzed by the police because they thought we were peeping toms. <laughs> uh, Lee's team, where do you want to begin? It's, there's something about... If he had said blown up, he blew up a banana factory. It would have been bizarre. There's something more bizarre about almost blowing up a banana factory. <laughs> what did you actually do in the banana factory? Well, what happens in a banana factory yeah. is that bananas come in from a foreign land, yes. let's say the Caribbean, yeah. and they are ripened in Bolton. <laughs> They're ripened in Bolton? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what, There's why not is... enough sun in the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> Did you work in this banana factory? I did, yeah. Right, what, what, what was did your you job? Do? I, I... Were you the banana straightener? No. <laughs> or were you the banana bender? Maybe they come in straight. <laughs> and it's this big muscly body that turns them into that shape. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they do in Bolton. <laughs> <laughs> what are you up to? Oh, you know, just usual. <laughs> bending me bananas. <laughs> Surely it's a banana ripening plant, anyway, not a factory. Well, it's a factory because there was a conveyor belt, so I just... Wait, wait, whoa, whoa. There's, There's a, a conveyor, conveyor belt. <laughs> so someone puts it on and it's green. <laughs> and by the end of the conveyor belt, it's ripened. How big <laughs> is this conveyor belt, Vernon? <laughs> and more to the point, well, what are you doing other than... <laughs> <laughs> Shall I straighten it? Yeah. <laughs> what did Mel do? Mel, uh, he was one of the, the foremen in the <laughs> and you There was only four men working in a banana factory. <laughs> <laughs> How did you almost blow up this banana factory? I, I was on a, a forklift truck, and, and what happened was I uh, inadvertently drove into a gas heater and, and disconnected it. Right, and then what happens? And then the, the factory filled up with gas. <laughs> really <laughs> properly fills. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> Uh, what did Mel so how did, what did Mel do? How did he save you? Mel shut down the factory and evacuated the building, leaving the bananas to ripen themselves. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about David? What did we think of David's story with the post box? What were you supposed to be posting? I had a card and two normal letters to post. Right. And uh, the nearest post box to me has a... It's, it's, has a very narrow aperture. Right. So only what only, for the letters? Yes, yeah. yeah. I know the kind of thing. Or for you know, <laughs> but whatever you want to use it for. But it's we've got them back home. Yeah, and <laughs> you can't get you can't you can't get them in sometimes. You can't get the wider uh, things, things in. in. Right. So what? Well, so you thought I'd just post whatever fits? And that was your phone. <laughs> <laughs> stuff my keys in there. Oh, they go in. The keys go in. I was contemplating what an outdated medium snail mail was, and I thought this will show them. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I had. I, 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 in my confusion, I said, "Oh, that doesn't fit." I'll post 
Those two, oh. they fit. And oh, what a fool! Oh, so the two what a fool I've been! The two if only this were happening in a sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> the two letters and the phone go in at the same time. Yeah. So um, you emailed it and put a hard copy in at the same time. It, it, <laughs> So how did how did Mel come into it? Was he? How did you air well, luckily, it? luckily, Mel had also <laughs> fallen in. <laughs> and, uh, he just reached it out, didn't he? And well, passed it yes, out. I mean, I, I hadn't realised that pillar boxes were manned until then. <laughs> <laughs> he simply handed it back. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, no. So go on. What happened next? I, I noticed that the the last collection of the day was happening about half an hour later. Right. And so I thought, I know what I'll do. <laughs> I'll simply wait. <laughs> Fiendishly no, clever. Yeah. Oh, no, you didn't. So what are you thinking? No, remind me again of your truth, lie. He uh, and I, Mel and I were stargazing oh, yeah. and the police quizzed us because they thought we were peeping toms. Was it just the two of you? Yes, it was actually, yeah. And what were you stargazing we at? We were looking at a meteor shower. Oh, OK. Yes. So the two of you are out. Uh, what have you got? You got the telescope? No, you don't. What have you got? You've got. A, you just use binoculars. 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 Yeah. Naked eye generally. Binoculars. But you see, you don't use a telescope because they move quite quickly. So you'd have to be really fast on a telescope. You'd be playing it like a ch <laughs> like that. Uh, yeah. All so right. But if you want a really good look, why don't you use two telescopes, like binoculars? <laughs> <laughs> So that's even better than binoculars. And also, if two things happen at once, you can go. And the moon's looking nice. <laughs> <laughs> So when the police turned up... We could see the police car coming, at the, yeah, because it just drove along and then stopped and two of the lads came over and walked over. Just, we were like he, two men what, standing in the middle of Ealing Common. There's houses all around, but with binoculars. Yeah, but you're looking... Surely you're not... You don't look at... You're like that, right? Right up in the air. I know, but, but maybe they saw you in the midpoint of that. Like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, no, like. no, no, no. You don't, you don't go, right, let's start at the ground and go... <laughs> you? you go like that and you do that. You don't go, would you like a cup of tea? Yeah. But, <laughs> sorry, I can't see. Everything's blurry. I don't, you can take right. them off, can't you? To be fair, nobody goes like this when they're using binoculars. Right, head up and now binoculars. Don't do <laughs> they that. They do. They go, look at that up there. Oh, yeah. yeah but, oh, oh, all they do do is go, have you seen the moon tonight? Wait, wait, wait. I need a bit of a run-up. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget Dara's face moves independently from his head as well. That's true, yeah. yes. He can, he can swivel his face. Nothing. No, no, look right. at the woman in the bathroom behind. It's true. <laughs> Right, uh, Lee, we need an answer. Is Mel Vernon's banana hero, David's postman pal, or Dara's saucy stargazer? What do you think? I think the difficult thing is that Mel's got a tan, but you can get a tan in all three of those jobs. Well, he's going to the Caribbean a lot to pick up bananas. <laughs> <laughs> stargazing, you can get a tan off that if you're out there long enough. And a postman, outdoors all day, yeah. You, are, you, you know that stargazing's done predominantly at night. <laughs> 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 There is not a shadow of a doubt in my mind that well, Mel works in, worked in the banana factory. OK, you're but saying no, banana man. I definitely, if I saw Dara and Mel on yeah. Ealing Common, I would think they were a couple of pervs. <laughs> but Dara could have said, it's OK, I work in TV. And the police would go, oh, well, that makes it impossible. Then. <laughs> <laughs> So what are you going to say? We are going to say that, in fact, Dara was cautioned by the police for standing on Ealing Coleman. Not necessarily for being a pervert. Caution no, actually it means something. Sorry, no, he wasn't cautioned. Okay, so, all right, he was... He questioned. Was, he was questioned, sorry. I was never formally <laughs> cautioned no. with <laughs> any... You say it's Dara. Go okay. for it. So, Mel, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Mel, and uh, I rescued Vernon after one... <laughs> really... Yes, Mel is Vernon's banana boss. Unbelievable. Um, so, uh, how dangerous was this? W were you just seconds away from bang? <laughs> Virtually, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Vernon's driving the forklift, and like oh, I said, that's what he says. Why did you speak like this before? <laughs> <laughs> why isn't he allowed to speak? <laughs> now, what was Vernon known as within this factory? A little of Vern. Little Vern. A little Vern. Oh. <laughs> oh. Stand up next to Mel Vernon and let's let's see little Vern now. <laughs> Mel, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> uh, which brings us to our final round, quick fire lies, in which our panelists lie not only through their teeth but against the clock. We will start with it's David. 
one of the codes I live my life by. <laughs> Always a good start. <laughs> is that my appearance should be in no way noteworthy. But then again, not so unnoteworthy as to be in itself noteworthy. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Well, if it is true, you're certainly carrying it off. <laughs> When did you decide on this code? It didn't happen suddenly. It just, you know... It sort of developed. The way I felt comfortable being yeah. sort of gradually formed into the, the philosophy, yeah. and I don't think that's too grandiose a term, that, <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> that I have read off a card for you today. <laughs> I would say, you're, since you've got a beard, yeah. you have become more noteworthy. The answer to that is I've enjoyed growing a beard. But you're right, because I've grown a beard, some people have said, oh, I see you've grown a beard, or he's got a beard, look at his beard. And I hate Can those I just moments. put you up on the point? I deeply <laughs> hate I... those moments of being physically noticed. <laughs> have, you re have you really enjoyed growing a beard? Well, no, well, that's what's so odd. I mean, I haven't, like, hugely enjoyed it. It's not no. been like a brilliant roller coaster. <laughs> but, but it's just very, very slightly I've enjoyed it, and very slightly also I've had a sense of achievement. Of course, it's, it is no achievement. It's actually a failure in personal hygiene. <laughs> but, but it feels like an achievement. But you, did, you surely went through the difficult, itchy stage. I did go through this. No one enjoys that. No. no I, I call them my teens. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you make these rules about the, everything? Uh, are the underpants you're wearing unnoteworthy enough to be un? To, you know what I'm saying? Are they? <laughs> no, no, I, I don't think. Sorry. That. Let's start again. Are you wearing underwear? <laughs> uh, yes. OK. And I don't want to sound too sexy, but yes. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to sound too sexy, but no. Oh. Under my underwear, I'm naked. Oh. <laughs> David, I yeah. want to know not what you consider noteworthy, I want to know what you consider so unnoteworthy that it becomes noteworthy. A grey tie. If you were in a suit, like you're in a suit-wearing scenario, yes. and you wore a grey tie, that would be so unnoteworthy as to be in itself noteworthy. So a grey tie... It could be so colourless, so not wanting to draw the eye, it would draw the eye. It's how you spot spies, isn't it? People who are just trying, trying to... to blend in so much, they blend it in so much they're noticeable. It's true. Isn't like it? a chameleon. If there was a chameleon in here, yeah. it would stand out. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if, if there was a comedian in here, it's... Uh, <laughs> it's a worrying round of applause on the subject <laughs> of our purpose, isn't it? Is it true or is it a lie? Make your decision. I think it's true. I think it's very plausible that David would uh, be like that, yeah. OK. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's true. True. I'll yep. go in my team true, and say true. true. All saying true. David, truth <laughs> or lie? Yes, well, of course it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's true. One of the codes David lives his life by is that his appearance should be in no way noteworthy. Uh, next. It's Rod. I once dug up my dead hamster... <laughs> ..and gave it a wash. What age were you when you bought it? Oh. And what age were you when it bought it? Oh, God. <laughs> I, when I bought it, I must have been, um... 25. 25? Twenty sorry. <laughs> what? 25? Six. So, I think we were... Six. So, I, I, I must say, I was thinking it would have been... I don't know exactly. Childhood. I did not record my age when I went into okay, the shop. OK, so you bought it. OK, but we're not... We're not, not to use it, hair has been 23 and 24 Mid here, right? You went 20. nine, is what we're basically getting here. No, I tell you what, maths really is your strong point. Yeah. <laughs> no, the point is, who in the 20s by the hamster? I like the fact that it didn't seem unusual that he dug it up and washed it. That's all right. <laughs> did you, you wash it? I'm sure in your mid-twenties. Did you wash Surely it? Surely that's not the bit you should be focusing on. <laughs> Did the hamster have a name? Yes, so his name was... Yanto. <laughs> How's that spelled? I-A-N-T-O, I think. Does it have, does it to be honest, it? I never had cause to write... <laughs> <the name down. laughs> you don't have to worry about the spelling of any pets, really. They just drop on <laughs> I think there are times when you have to write... You might, you might be writing oh. an email yeah. with news I, 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 to, to a loved one. A house, By the way, Yanto's looking peaky. <laughs> <laughs> I did did once... you not put a little tombstone, thus making it easy for you later to dig him up and wash him? <laughs> he did have a tombstone, yeah, of sorts. Yeah. And did he not have Yanto written on the tombstone? 
Tragically, there was already something written on his tombstone. What was it on? It was a lollipop stick. <laughs> <laughs> it had a joke on it. The hamster died and you buried it where? In the garden. How, how long was it under the earth before you dug it up? Was it sort of months uh, later? No, or? probably a day or two. Was it in a container, a sort of hamster coffin? It, it was in a container, yeah. What was the container? <laughs> it was in a... a smoothie bottle. <laughs> a smoothie... A smoothie bottle? <laughs> he was in a smoothie bottle. <laughs> How did you get the hamster into the smoothie bottle? <laughs> With the lolly stick. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I took the top off and just pushed him in. You sort of <laughs> forced him in. So yeah, I, I imagine I had I... to. He was dead. I tried persuading him, but it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and then, how would you get the hamster out to wash it? Or did you put the water in the bottle, put the lid back on, give it a shake, and then take the lid off, and then? Do no, you... you wouldn't want to put water in. You'd want to put lots of fizzy drink in, shake it up. And <laughs> he's out. <laughs> but he is blown out of here. And then you go. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that we haven't established in all of this is why you felt you had to clean him. Because he, well, because he had like a strawberry Mohican. It was gone stiff. There's so you... strawberry stuff in there. Yeah, I hadn't rinsed it out properly. <laughs> and you were racked with guilt. Yeah. Oh wow. Can you describe the <laughs> the, the washing? I, if I'm honest, I, the washing of him doesn't stand out that much in my head. It was a fairly straightforward rinse and blow dry, as I remember. <laughs> in the, in what the, a blow dry! <laughs> Come on, you didn't blow dry him. In the kitchen. Did anyone else on your holidays? <laughs> <laughs> What's a cup of tea or anything? Did you, <laughs> did you run the hamster under the kitchen tap? I washed as much of that strawberry smoothie out of his sticky, brittle hair as I could. <laughs> and said our goodbyes and buried him in the garden. So, did you feel like you'd done the right thing? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Thanks, Rob. I did, yeah. That's good. That's, That's good nice. to know. That's Do nice. you think he's telling the truth? I don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe a quick flick under the tap, but I don't think he'd spend time scrubbing down the So, you're hamster. saying lie? We're saying it's a lie. We're saying it's a yeah. lie. Yeah. Rod, the hamster, the burial, the, the resurrection. Is it the truth, or were you telling a lie? Obviously. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 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 true and it's very upsetting. <laughs> and that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show. I can reveal that uh, Lee's team have won by four points to one. But it's not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week this week is Dara O'Brien. <laughs> yes, Dara is so good at lying, even Lance Armstrong thinks he should ease up. <laughs> good night. <laughs> <laughs>